Brian Kilmeade of Fox News sat down with George W. Bush to endlessly suck up to him. Let's listen to them get Iraq 100,000 trillion percent wrong. We're looking at what's going on in Iraq right now. Unlike a year ago, we saw the mess in Syria, and you talked a little bit about that. If these guys are saying to themselves, man, was my sacrifice worth it, what do you say to them? I say it, it really was. Uh, the world was better off without Saddam Hussein in power or the Taliban in power. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we're still in Iraq. Uh, the presence isn't as significant as it was in uh, 2009, but we're there. And uh, now we've got pilots in harm's way. Uh, dealing with a, uh, a group of ideologues who murder the innocent. Uh, same exact modus operandi right. of uh, those who murdered 3,000 on our soil. You said last year, you know, we gave uh, Saddam Hussein the world's going to be better without him than it yeah. is, and America's safer without him than it is, and you said, you know, history will tell if the Iraqis are going to make the most of their opportunity to live in freedom. Yeah. Did they blow it? Uh, well, it's not over. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of strong institutions in Iraq. Uh, the Iraqi people obviously are going to have to make the decision as to whether or not they want to live in peace. They're not ready to do it on their own, and that, that's the lesson we've learned recently. Not only that, you knew it in 2007. In fact, this is George Bush, President George Bush, in 2007, before the surge. Well, you're trying to tell people uh, we need a surge, and here's why. Uh, here's what you said, and uh, here's how accurate it is. Begin withdrawing before our commanders tell us we're ready would be dangerous. It mean that we'd be risking mass killings on a horrific scale. It would mean we allow the terrorists to establish a safe haven in Iraq to replace the one they lost in Afghanistan. It would mean it'd be increasing the probability that American troops would have to return at some later date to confront an enemy that is even more dangerous. How did you know? Well, I know the nature of the enemy. Oh, make it stop. Make it stop. Everything they said there was wrong. He just argued again for the 15,000th time, we should have gone into Iraq. The world is better without Saddam. No, it's not. No, it's not. The jury's in on this. No, the world is not better without Saddam. You know who is better without Saddam? The Kurds and the Shiites in Iraq. That's it. The rest of the region was stabilized. Saddam Hussein and his Ba'athists would have crushed ISIS on a Wednesday before brunch. I can't tell you how many times I've gone over this on the show before. The problem was the invasion in the first place because you destabilized the region and created ISIS. Here's a fact that people don't discuss nearly enough. Every single weapon being used by ISIS, they're from the U.S. Now you're thinking, how's that even possible? That doesn't even make sense. Oh yes, it does. Because they got their weapons from waltzing into Iraq from Syria. They crossed the border and they saw that we left behind all these machine guns and Humvees and anti-aircraft missiles and things that you should never leave behind in a crazy place like Iraq. We did because it was it's cheaper to keep the stuff there and also we can't... Uh, give Abrams and and Raytheon and Halliburton another uh, no-bid contract if we're just going to save the weapons and use them again. See, they need to keep making weapons because they need to make more money. We need to make people rich. So just leave behind the rocket launchers in Iraq, and it'll be cool. Nobody bad will pick them up. Except that's exactly what ISIS did. And so they got their weapons that way, and they also got their weapons when under Obama... He approved arms to go from our ally, Saudi Arabia, to the FSA, the Free Syrian Army in uh, Syria. They're supposed to be the, the moderate rebels. Well, guess who ended up getting those weapons? ISIS. Because some people in the FSA defected to ISIS. Uh, other times, people in the FSA lost battles to ISIS, and then ISIS came and take their, took their weapons. So every weapon that ISIS is, usi is using came from us. So stop and think about that. How would ISIS not exist? Or how would they have zero power if they never got weapons? How could they have never gotten weapons? If we never invaded Iraq in the first place, and if we never approved our ally Saudi Arabia to give weapons to the FSA. 
See, these are, these are the inconvenient facts that the Republicans gloss over, that Fox News doesn't give a fuck about, and that George Bush is trying to hide. Or actually, I don't know, maybe he's just as big of an idiot as we think he is, and he doesn't know. The problem was the invasion in the first place. Saddam Hussein is not a good guy. He's a very bad guy. But he's less of a bad guy than ISIS, and they are his mortal enemy. Sunni Baathists are secular. Okay, that's what Saddam is. They are mortal enemies of ISIS, just like Saddam was a mortal enemy of Al-Qaeda. He would never have let them come to power because they threatened his power in the region. So, I mean, this is just absolutely maddening to watch this and see that this many years later, he's still, you know, oh, no, yeah, the world's better without Saddam. You know, everything's all hunky-dory. We should have went into Iraq in the first place. Now, the final thing I'll say is, when we leave Iraq, yeah, it's going to be bad. That's right. They played the clip of Bush saying that like it was like he had a crystal ball and he was the only one saying it. No, we all acknowledge that that was a very strong possibility, but here's the difference. So what? I don't care. It's none of my business. It's none of our business. Okay, should I care about that violence and a broken region any more or less than I should care about North Korea? which is the same thing, or the, the Congo, which they have a religious war between Muslims and Christians right now, or Nigeria, which has Boko Haram, or Somalia, which has Al-Shabaab. In Mali, Al-Qaeda has taken over the whole northern part of the country to the point where France is fighting a war against them there. Northern Mali is Al-Qaedistan right now. Why should I care any more about Iraq going to shit than I care about any of these other countries going to shit? Look, I'm not happy that they're going to shit. I wish they were perfectly lovely places with beach resorts and everybody making 100 grand a year, but they're not that. And it's not our job to go in and fix everything. So it was conservatives, it was liberals, it was everybody at the time saying, yes, okay, if we leave Iraq... Uh too early, or if we leave Iraq whenever, it's going to go to shit. But the difference is, we don't think it's our responsibility to permanently occupy to stop Sunnis and Shiites from fighting each other. God, it's so sad that we... Oh, we're dealing with this shit. We're dealing with this shit in 2014. The bottom line is, that's not an argument to stay. That, hey, if we leave, things, things bad things will happen. Okay. <laughs> And <laughs> what is the fuck? Like, what is that? That's not an argument.